Mamie Gummer is currently earning rave reviews for her performance as a badly burned war vet coming home in Ugly Lies the Bone off-Broadway. We're here today at Roundabout Underground's Black Box Theatre to talk to the stage and screen star. So Mamie Gummer, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for um, having me. I saw this the other day. I hate everything, but I love this show. You were brilliant in it and you've had rave reviews. I know, which is so Did lovely. You, do, you read them? Like, do, you read, do you read reviews? I mean, how does it go? I, uh, no, I don't, I don't read them, but I, you know, we were at the party and all of a sudden I, the room just erupted yeah. in a big like kind of hoot and holler. So I knew that it was not bad. <laughs> not bad, incredible. Now, yeah. obviously you started out your career really off Broadway. Mm. How does it feel to be back in a tiny setting? 62 seats, I think, this sit theater, yeah. isn't it? It's really, it's, it's, I love it. There's like really nothing that I love more. And I treasure this space in particular because um, I had my debut mm -hmm. upstairs in a play called Mr. Marmalade, and that was like exactly 10 years ago. So it just, it feels like I've come home. <laughs> Fabulous. Now, you've got a big screen career going on. What was it about this play that made you think, yes, I want to come back off Broadway in Ugly Lies the Bone? You don't see a role like mm. this um, very often. And I, I read the play itself and I just fell in love with it. And I thought that um, the way that Lindsay implemented like w exactly what the theater in particular mm -hmm. like can offer, the kind of magic of that. Uh, and. I just thought it was fascinating how it deals with virtual reality and it asks, I think, very big questions. And it's, an, it's a very big, ambitious little play. It's all about a badly burned vet coming home. She's coming home. Um, she's dealing with uh, pain management and you know, rehabilitation emotionally and physically. And uh, it's sort of about the subjectivity of pain in a way. Did you speak to any vets when you were preparing for the role? I did, I did, and I read, um, I read a few great uh, books, Ashley's War in particular, and Redeployment, which were great. Now talk to me about the makeup process, because it's lengthy, isn't it? Because you're playing a very badly burned woman, so yeah. it's, how, how's, how's that process? It's kind of really nice, actually, because it's sort of, it's this enforced period of time where I just have to settle in and, and focus. It becomes mm -hmm. kind of meditative, so everything that whatever's happened in the day sort of falls away mm -hmm. as as these things are applied but it, it takes about an hour um, but they're like they're really well done um, filmic you know because it's such a small mm -hmm. space like they had to be the best quality and um, the artist the makeup artist that, that puts them on is just fantastic so this play she deals with her pain really through virtual reality so talk to me about a bit about this yeah, it was a thing I was not uh, um, aware of, but is being used to um, in physical rehabilitation to treat um, physical pain. And it's hard to describe, but I they demonstrated how it how it mm -hmm. works for us before we started rehearsing. Yeah. And basically, it, it creates a world that that puts you at at, at ease. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a very bizarre kind of Jungian, like trippy landscape, but it, it makes you really focus. So it's sort of a mind over matter thing. But to test it, uh, this man at, had me put my hand in a bucket of ice to kind of to test the my okay. just resting yeah. pain threshold. And I could only keep my hand in there for like a minute. And then, but when I put on the goggles and, and entered into the program, I put my hand back in the bucket and kept it in there for like two and a half minutes. That's incredible. Yeah. It's really, it's really insane. Now, although this play is obviously dealing with very serious topics, there's humor in it as well though, isn't there? Yeah, there's a lot of life. I mean, basically she's, she's an intrepid mm -hmm. spirit and she, her will to live and get through this experience is so really pervasive and it's very present in the way that Lindsay's written these characters. They're very human mm -hmm. and endearing, and they like they really are trying, you know. And humor is sort of, you know, the, the other perfect antidote to, yeah. to pain. So. Now, uh, you were born in New York, but you were brought up in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your first Broadway show being so close to New York? Oh my goodness! I think it was Cats. I had that answer exactly <laughs> yesterday from someone yeah, else. I think that must have been everybody's like, Did you have a favourite cat? This is always my next question. The, whatever, the memory one. Grisabella. Grisabella, yeah. That was yes. also the same, yes. yeah. Grisabella. 
And then, but I remember seeing Les Mis like four times in the theater when I was. And I read that you knew that you always wanted to be an actress, that it was pretty much a done deal from day one. Yeah, yeah. So I've been told. <laughs> is it true that you had a rave review from the New York Times when you were 20 months old, or is that just urban myth? No, that it is true. How? I mean, I, I you're amazing. I know. I mean, I saw you on stage, but <laughs> I was. I mean, I was just a baby. But my character mm. was only, I think, 10 months. So oh, okay. it was a big stretch. <laughs> but you're still stretching. To be fair, I mean, now you go for very quirky, difficult characters. I mean, how would you describe them? I just would say complicated, um, challenging, challenged. That's the stuff that, I mean, I don't know why else anyone would want to do this kind of work, but to kind of learn more about yourself mm -hmm. or about, you know, the people around you. Now, hands up, I'm a daughter of, so my dad wrote Cats. <gasps> I so my dad wrote Cats. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. My dad is Andrew Lewis. Oh I'm, I'm my a daughter God. of, I'm a daughter of Club. And I think all of us kids have had a different way of dealing with being daughter or son of Andrew Lloyd Webber. Mm -hmm. Now you obviously have the same way. How have you approached it going into the same profession? I mean, that's... I mean, look at us. Look, look at we're here. Yeah, I mean, we're <laughs> on another scale. It's extraordinary. I'm, I, you know, I just, I think that like I grew up seeing a woman do professionally mm -hmm. what she loved to do. And with that as an example, it's sort of like, it was a no brainer that that's what I wanted. Have they been here to see you in the show yet? Mm -hmm. And they must have been blown away. I mean, yeah, this... they were really proud. Although my dad, at one point, um, he came to opening. He, yeah. he like, he nearly had to leave. Oh. I think it was really, you oh. know, it's hard yeah. <laughs> for him to like, to see his daughter in, um, in pain. But yeah, they were they were very chuffed. It's incredible. Now, uh, you made your Broadway debut in 2008. In That's right, yeah, in Dangerous Liaison. I love that play. When are you coming back? You are incredible. I know you've got this big screen career going on, but quite frankly, you need, you need to now be on Broadway. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I'm, the lines are open. <laughs> <laughs> so, final question. What do you hope audiences who come to see you in Ugly Lies of Bone take away with them from the show? Hope. That's wonderful. Amy Dolma, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you.